Alright guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and you may well remember the Acer Predator Orion X from our showcase video on this small form factor PC from the end of last year. That system, however, we were sent was an early prototype with RTX 4090 graphics, so it wasn't actually representative of the model you can go out and buy here in the UK from Curry's. Today, however, we have got our hands on a final retail model, so this is exactly the same spec as if you went out and bought one today. That means it's got an i9 3900KS, RTX 4080, 32 gigs of DDR5 memory, as well as two one terabyte SSDs for £3,299. Today, let's find out if this machine is worth buying. At its core, the Acer Predator Orion X is a small form factor PC with a total chassis volume of 15.4 litres, so while it's not quite as compact as a console, it is relatively small as gaming PCs go. It's using a custom made dual chamber case that you can access by lifting the levers on the front panel, and then both side panels will pop out and can be lifted away. The right hand side, which is known as Zone 1, is home to the motherboard, CPU, memory, storage and power supply, while a PCIe riser cable is used to connect to the graphics cards on the other side of the case in Zone 2. There is also some labelling for Zone 3, but this only gives you access to the top panel and the all-in-one liquid cooler screw, so it's not really that useful. Starting in Zone 1 then, Acer has fitted a Z790 ITX motherboard, but that's really all the detail they're giving us from the spec sheet. It does appear to be a custom job designed for the Orion X and it has its own custom Acer BIOS, but who the actual manufacturer is, I'm not sure, and it certainly looks pretty basic on first impressions. The i9-3900KS CPU is plugged into this board though, which is technically now a last gen part, but it does still offer eight Raptor Lake P cores and 16 E cores, though we will take a closer look at performance later in the video. That CPU is cooled by a compact 240mm all-in-one with the fan set to exhaust out of the roof so it will be interesting to see how that deals with the heat of the 13900KS. Memory also appears to be custom for this system with 32 gigs of DDR5 clocked at 5600 mega transfers bearing the Predator logo. There's also two internal M.2 slots but both are occupied by 1TB Micron PCIe Gen 3 SSDs. That means just a total of two terabytes in a system which costs over £3,000, and for me that certainly feels very stingy. Not least the fact that these are also Gen 3 SSDs, when obviously Gen 5 SSDs have now been on the market for several months, which personally I would expect considering the price point of this system. If you do want to add more storage however, there is actually a removable hot swap enclosure found in the front panel, which users can access to install another M.2 SSD, though this does come empty by default, so you do have to supply your own drive. Over in Zone 2 then, the only component here is the graphics card, which is an RTX 4080 non-super that again seems custom made for the Predator Orion X. It's a triple fan and triple slot air-cooled card, though it does run at a stock speed of 2505 MHz, so it hasn't been factory overclocked. That's all powered by the compact 850 watt PSU and again we have no details on it other than the fact it's an 80 plus gold SFX unit though that should be fine for this spec. Overall port selection as well it does have to be said is on the basic side. As we can see from the rear of the motherboard there's a total of 5 full size USB ports, 1 USB-C that's USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2 alongside Ethernet and audio jacks but that's really it. And then on the front panel, we get another Type-C USB 3.2 Gen 2 x 2 and then one USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A alongside audio and mic jacks. If you hadn't noticed already as well, RGB lighting can be found on the front panel, on the CPU block, and with the liquid coolers fans, and all of the lighting can be synchronized using the Predator Sense app that does come pre-installed on the Orion X. If you're looking for a new chair, then you should definitely check out Boolies. I'm currently sat on their Ninja Pro gaming chair, which is one of three models from their gaming series alongside the Elite and the Master. So if you're looking for something new to stick in your setup that you can sit on and game and work, then I recommend definitely checking out boolies.co.uk. That's really it then for a quick tour of the system and all the core components, but before we dive into the benchmarks, it's definitely worth going over the default CPU behavior, as this is pretty interesting. 
So the first thing you need to know is there are a few different profiles to choose from within the Predator Sense software, but the balanced profile is the default out of the box mode. Interestingly, this has a PL2 of 253 watts, but a PL1 of just 150 watts. So while the CPU does boost to about 5 gigahertz on the Picos initially in Cinebench R23, and you can see package power at around 250 watts, after just a minute, the power draw drops to 150 watts, resulting in the Picos clocking at just 4.2 to 4.3 gigahertz. Now I also tried the turbo profile, but it turns out the PL1 and PL2 values are exactly the same, though this mode did run most of the Cinebench 30 minute run at between 4.3 and 4.4 gigahertz, so we're talking maybe an extra 100 or 200 megahertz faster than the balance mode, but really nothing significant. Neither mode affects GPU power, however, with the RTX 4080 running comfortably at around 2745 MHz and power was rated at over 300 watts. For reference then, a completely stock i9-3900KS in the KitGuru GPU test rig runs at 5.6 GHz on the P-cores initially, only settling down to 5.4 GHz or so due to thermal constraints. So the CPU in the Orion X is leaving at least 1 GHz clock speed on the table due to its 150 watt PL1 compared to a completely stock unlocked 3900KS. At this point, I had to take a look in the BIOS to see if it was possible to override this restrictive 150 watt PL1, and I found that there were barely any actual CPU settings that can be adjusted. You just get the choice of the same four modes that are available within the Predator Sense software. I did, however, also discover that with default settings applied, XMP is not enabled for the Orion X. That 5600 mega transfer CL46 memory that is found by default is actually a 6000 mega transfers CL44 kit. And while that's not a massive difference, it seems absolutely bonkers to me to be leaving this performance on the table just due to XMP not being enabled by default. For all of the testing you're about to see then, I did this with everything at its default out of the box setting. So that means XMP off using the balanced profile. After all, I figure if you're buying a pre-built PC, the chance of you actually diving into the BIOS and enabling different settings is probably pretty low, so this is representative of what you get with no changes made to the system. I'm also using the KitGuru GPU test rig as our main point of comparison, given it also packs the i9-3900KS, but in an unrestricted ATX form factor, so we can clearly see the difference between the Orion X and a system without those restrictive power limits. For good measure as well, I'm also including the Corsair One i500 mini PC that I reviewed very recently, which has a 4900K and RTX 4090. Diving into our benchmarks then, starting with Cinebench Multicore, here we can see a sizable performance loss for the Orion X when compared to our own GPU test rig, which is running with the same CPU. The Orion X actually scores about 23% lower due to its clock speed deficit as a result of the power limit. Now, that restrictive power limit isn't such a problem for the single core test, where we see just a 2% difference between the KitGuru test rig and the Orion X. Blender, however, is another all-core workload, and here we can see a huge performance gain for our KitGuru test rig, considering both systems are using the same CPU. We can actually see a 25% reduction in performance on the Orion X compared to our own system. Even the Corsair 1 manages a good chunk of extra performance with its 200 watt PL1 for the 4900K. There's not as much difference on show in PC Mark 10 as the results are much closer overall, but across all four metrics that this benchmark shows us, the Orion X does come in slower. Memory bandwidth also shows the Orion X to be quite lackluster, hitting around 75,000 megabytes per second read and 70,000 megabytes per second write. I also re-ran this test with XMP enabled and the speeds increased to about 82,000 megabytes per second and 76,000 megabytes per second respectively, so that's about an extra 9% memory bandwidth that has been left on the table due to XMP being turned off by default. There is some good news however and that is that the GPU performs very similarly to the RTX 4080 Founders Edition that I installed in the KitGuru test rig, both delivering around 28,000 points in 3D Mark Time Spy. Finally though, we come to SSD speeds and these are somewhat disappointing considering the price of the machine. As we mentioned, Acer is using a pair of Micron PCIe Gen 3 SSDs and as such we don't see speeds exceeding 3600 megabytes per second. 
Yeah, it will be fine for gaming, but when Gen 5 SSDs are readily available, it definitely feels like a backwards step. Moving on to our game benchmarks though, here we're going to test seven different titles using 1440p and 4K resolutions, and all games were benchmarked using the highest in-game quality presets, but with no ray tracing and no DLSS or FSR. As you can see from the benchmarks on screen now then, the Orion X is much more competitive with our own test system when it comes to gaming, as the restrictive PL1 limit is not really a factor here. There are a couple of occasions where we see a small difference between the two machines, but nothing more than a handful of frames, so you'd be hard pressed to notice in the real world. That means of course it is a very capable machine for both 1440p and even 4K gaming, and of course you can always enable DLSS for a further frame rate boost in the games that support it. Moving on to our thermal testing then, here I'm going to show you a live readout from HW Info, which will show the CPU package temperature after a 30 minute run in both Cinebench R23 and also Cyberpunk 2077. You may see higher figures in the max temperature column, but these are just from the initial boost period when power draw is higher, and that only lasts for less than a minute, and we're really interested in the steady state long duration figures, which is much more representative of a sustained real workload. As we can see then, the 3900KS actually ends up running very cool by its standards, all down to the 150 watt power limit. In Cinebench, for instance, it was barely over 60 degrees, and then if we switch to a gaming workload, we weren't seeing higher than 80 degrees in Cyberpunk 2077. For me, there is definitely a lot more thermal headroom to push the power draw higher and thus increase clock speeds, Though we do suspect the basic motherboard VRMs are the reason behind the 150 watt PL1 rather than raw CPU thermals. GPU thermals are also nothing to worry about as the triple fan unit delivered solid results in our Cyberpunk 2077 stress test. We saw the hotspot hitting around 83 degrees and the memory was at 80 degrees. I'm pleased to say that the Orion X isn't a particularly loud system, likely due to the fact that the CPU is only clocking just above 4 GHz. It is audible under load, hitting around 41 decibels while gaming, but that would be easily drowned out by a headset or even some speakers. Lastly then, total system power draw is also nothing to worry about. When gaming we saw just over 520 watts in Cyberpunk at 4K, but that is still well below the 850 watt capacity of the power supply. You'd even be able to stick in a 4090 without any issues, assuming it would fit, so there is scope to swap out the GPU down the line if you do purchase the Orion X. So that brings us to the end of our review of the Acer Predator Orion X, and it is definitely an interesting system, though perhaps not always for the right reasons. Starting with the positive points though, it is very capable of gaming either at 1440p or 4K thanks to its i9 and RTX 4080 which do combine to provide more than adequate frame rates. Some may also appreciate the kind of spaceship inspired aesthetic of the case itself though that won't be for everyone and it is relatively compact as gaming PCs go with a total volume of 15.4 litres, though again there are smaller chassis on the market. As you will have picked up on throughout the video however, there are just a few too many strange choices and quirks for me to fully recommend the Orion X. The biggest of these is undoubtedly the choice of CPU, as I really don't think going for the i9-3900KS was the right CPU for this system. Not only is it now technically a last gen part, but it is notoriously hot and power hungry, so limiting it with the 150 watt PL1 just feels like a huge waste. After all, why opt for such a high power chip only to throttle it later? To my mind, the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D would have made a lot more sense considering it's just as fast, if not faster for gaming, but its TDP comes in at just 120 watts, so it could run full pelt in the system without any compromises. There's also the fact that you only get two terabytes of storage, which at this price point to me feels very stingy, let alone the fact that they're PCIe Gen 3 drives, not even Gen 4 or Gen 5, which I really would expect at this price point. Even more bewildering though is the fact that XMP is not enabled by default so performance is being left on the table for basically no reason that I can see. Overall then, I just can't help shake the feeling that I really don't understand the Orion X's USP. It's a decent enough system if you're only going to play games, but you can get smaller enthusiast ITX chassis and it does have plenty of things I would change about it. 
Those issues as well only get amplified by the price as this system actually retails for £3,299 here in the UK, which is actually reduced from £3,799, which was the price for several months. Using PC Pot Picker, I actually spec'd out a system as similar as possible, and that came to a cost of under £2,500. Of course, I do understand that any pre-built system is going to have some sort of price premium, but Acer is effectively charging £700 more than the street pricing for a similar spec, which, considering the system's flaws, is just way too steep. Overall then, I think the Orion X, I guess, does have some potential. It would really need a considerable price cut to be even worth considering, but right now there's just too many compromises, too many strange decisions for me to be able to fully recommend this system. That is going to do it for this video, guys, so if you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up, and as always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to ding that notification bell so you don't miss when we upload a new video. And if you want to carry on the conversation, you can find an invite link to our Discord server in the description. While you're there, you can also find a link to our merch store where you can pick up a cool t-shirt like the ones on screen, and if you're feeling particularly generous, you can even consider backing us on Patreon. That's it for this one though guys, I'm Dominic for KitGuru and I'll see you in the next video.